Welcome to the second part of our bellows tutorial. In our first episode, we learned how to create the part of the expression that makes the concertina action of our bellows object. In this tutorial, we're going to enhance this by taking the odd numbered circles from our bellows object and making these expand and contract when we move our controller circle up and down. In order to achieve this, we need to add three more nodes. Initially, we need another hierarchy, so I'll copy this one across, Command C, Command V, and drop that down here. As we've copied the hierarchy, we already have the controller object in the exclude box, and now we need all the even numbered circles to join it. So I'll select 0, hold down my control key, and select 2, 4, 6, 8. Select my hierarchy again and then drag these circles into the exclude box as well. And now we've got everything in there that we don't need to be affected by the rest of the expression. We plug our bellows object into the hierarchy as we did before. And now as we've done on so many occasions, we need to call upon the services of a range mapper. So we'll come down to calculate and bring that in there and place it over here because we need to plug the position Y from the controller here into the input of the range mapper. And in our parameters, the input lower needs to be the maximum height of the controller circle, which will be 200, so we'll key that in there. Of course, we haven't clamped this, but we could have done, and if you'd like to add this for yourself, then by all means feel free to do so. We'll call our input lower 40, so there you're minimum and maximum clamp values, should you decide to do that. The output lower needs to be set to 95, because of course our odd numbered circles have a maximum radii of 95 meters, and output upper will set to 85. And now as our controller circle moves up and down over a range of 160 meters, our odd numbered circles will expand and contract over a range of 10 meters, and this should look good. I think we're happy with this, so that completes that stage of our expression. The last thing we need to do is drag in one of our circle objects. I've gone for circle zero, but it could be any one of them. We're going to give that an object port, and in object properties, radius. I'll just expand that a little bit there, and then swap the ports over, just drag and drop that up there. The hierarchy, we wire into the object port, exactly the same as we did with the bellows, and we take the output of our range mapper and wire that into the radius port there. Now as I briefly mentioned earlier, this could in fact be any one of the circles, because all this is acting as is a temporary container for each of the circles as they're passed from the hierarchy. So it doesn't mind which of these, you could even use the controller, it doesn't care, just so long as we're using a circle because we need the radius and that's why we can't use the bellows of the placeholder on this particular occasion, because it doesn't have the radius parameter. That completes the final stage of our expression. So let's select our controller and see what happens. And now as we move it down, you can see the circles are contracting nicely. And the bellows, if we move back up again, look a lot more realistic, don't they? Much, much better. They looked good before, but this is the finishing touch. It really brings them alive and makes them more dynamic. Beautiful. And that's our finished expression. To quickly recap, we've created a second hierarchy and we've excluded the even numbered circles as well as the controller. In our range mapper, we've used the maximum height of our controller circle, which is 200 meters as the input lower. And we've set the input upper at 40 meters for the minimum height of our controller circle. We've given our output lower a value of 95 and our output upper a value of 85 so that we can expand and contract our circles over a range of 10 meters. And then we've passed these values to the radii of the circles via the hierarchy node exactly as we've done previously with the heights. And that's it. We've completed our project. Our bellows object is working absolutely perfectly and it looks really great when it's animated. And that just about concludes this tutorial. So once again, I hope you've enjoyed this one and that you've learned something of value.
and I'll see you very shortly on the next one.